good morning everybody and let us discuss about this ongoing topic on the surface roughness. So, we started the topic in the last class and we have seen that there are different different components available and there are many different instruments also available. So, we have to select some component depending on the what is the requirement of that particular component which we are uh, machine from the workpiece. And then we have seen that different machines are available or instruments are available which can be used for measurement of the surface roughness. And we also found that non contact type and atomic force microscopy based instruments are good for the measurement of surface roughness on the micro components. So, let us go further on this then. So, we have seen this particular slide in the last class and these are the different properties of the or the specifications of the instrument. So, depending on your requirement you have to select this particular specification and then select the work, work instrument which we are going to use. So, what things are there in the surface roughness? The surface roughness damage is mostly done by the forces because if you see this particular figure here what is going to happen? So, here you are getting burr. So, these are the burr formation. So, these are the burr formation here, these are the burr formation and this is the surface. So, if you see this surface, this surface you are actually getting some type of machine mark. So, these are the milling cutting marks and whatever the spacing is there, that spacing will create a problem at the later scale. What we need there, we do not need those type of marks and we do not need any type of projected material. So, this is the vertical wall. So, this is the vertical wall and this is the uh, bottom surface and this is the wall surface and this is what is the component of the unmachined surface side surface. So, in this way one is the forces if the forces are very very high or fluctuating forces then you will get a different different pattern and there is a burr formation also and there is a surface roughness increase also. Another thing is the vibration because if your force is uh, your workpiece is not clamped properly or your tool is not clamped properly on the uh, spindle uh, no uh, spindle uh, tool spindle at that time you are getting a vibration. And if you are machining a some type of heterogeneous material, then again there is a vibration in the uh, machine. So, this vibration also creates uh, surface roughness very, very high. Plastic deformation also create a problem because what is going to happen that your material will be, if, if you are machining a brittle material, your roughness will be mostly sometimes very, very smooth. But in machining of a ductile material like aluminum, it is very difficult to maintain or getting a good surface finish. And burr formation is obviously related to the surface. The higher the burr formation, higher is the roughness. So, this both things are coupled with each other. So, high surface roughness are mostly elastic recovery because when you are cutting a material, we have seen in that uh, uh, lecture where we have seen that uh, what is the condition when you are uh, machining with a low depth of cut, but the high cutting edge radius. So, at that case, mostly it is elastic recovery, your tool will just pass through the surface without removing any material. So, that is the problem with the high roughness. Elastic recovery depends on the size of the cutting edge radius and the workpiece material because we have seen that if you have to uh, continuously monitor the status of the cutting edge radius with respect to the uncut chip thickness or the depth of cut. Material also play important because the soft materials have the high elastic recovery compared to the brittle material. Large electric that is mostly when your cutting edge radius is very, very large at that time it will create a problem because it will just pass through the surface and you will not get any type of further improvement. Right? So, what is the general scenario? The sharper the cutting edge better is the surface finish. Right? So, because we want to avoid the plowing action if your surface or the cutting edge is very, very dull at that time we know that it is not uh, maintaining its uh, value with respect to the uncut chip thickness and because of that you will end up with rubbing and plowing type of mechanism and you are not getting the better surface finish in this case. So, we have to maintain the sharpness of the cutting edge for a longer time. So, there are many ways that if you set a process parameter uh, very, very efficiently or optimize then you will retain this thing. There is a coating also available, you can use cooling uh, coolant also. So, these are the different ways you can maintain that part. So, material properties, microstructure and hardness that we have seen that if it is a soft material then your surface softness is high and if it is a brittle material you can get a good surface finish. Then what is the material property that for small tool what is the problem that its stiffness is very, very small and the tool deflection is very, very high because when you are cutting a, a material then you are end up with the high vibration and finally the high roughness. 
So, this is the problem with the small cutting load. If you use the bigger cutting tool what we are using in the macro machining at that time your level stiffness is not a problem because material has a very large amount of uh, volume available. So, which will uh, make sure that it will not deflect to a certain level and you are not getting a vibration in that. And this is the things in terms of the surface roughness. Now, here what is important is there are two different tools one is the 600 micron and there is 900 micron and there are three different cutting tool material that work piece material. So, this is the things. So, if you see this particular thing 600 micron if you see this is the 600 micron 600 micron for machining of brass and 600 micron for machining of a aluminum. Now, if you see that aluminum is very very ductile material. So, its roughness is also very very high in this case and another thing that smaller the tool higher is the roughness because we know that smaller the tool what is going to happen that because of this sequence of this particular event you are getting a high surface roughness. Other than that we also know that a smaller the tool your um, uh, means consistency with respect to the uncut chip next uh, that is the relation between these two is more and more tight. So, you have to also maintain this particular relation if you are going to use very very small cutting tool. So, that is the reason that you can see that with a 600 micron all the results is giving or results are giving more surface roughness, but when you are going with a bigger size cutting tool and keeping all the parameter constant then you are end up with a small surface finish or the small small uh, surface roughness. So, in this case you can see the brass is giving much better result compared to the other two material because in the steel material material removal because we know the harder the tool our tool wear is also very very high. So, it is not only case of the material ductile material, but we have to also see so in brass is something in between these two. So, you are actually optimizing with respect to material that going to with a hard material your tool wear will be very very high and at the end you are uh, material surface roughness is very high compared to bra compared to aluminum aluminum is soft material so your tool wear is not a problem but the chip clogging is problem then the material removal is also problem you have elastic recovery so those things play important role in the surface generation mechanism so this is diagram what it is showing right so this is what is the chip so now if you see the condition of the cutting tool now when you cut a steel material you can see that there is no chip clogging on the flute of this cutting tool but if you see aluminum there are many chips which are actually stick to the surface and these particular chips are creating problems. So, now if you use this cutter this yes, cutter will uh, chip will not get the flow or the passage through which it will come out of the socket or come out of this particular pocket which is going to cut in this and this is in between these two because here if you see very small amount of material is uh, loaded in the fluid but this material may be removed if you rotate at a very very high rpm, but nothing is here, but the tool wear may be very high in this compared to the other two materials. So, this is the condition of the cutting tool after machining of three different type of work piece material. Right. So, these are the property of this particular material. So, now if you see in this the elastic module is important, yield stress is important, hardness is important. If you see this particular material, so these are the three particular things and then this is the hardness is here and this is the yield strength is here correct. So, depending on if it is a very very low it is also problem if it is very very high also it is a problem in between it is giving a optimized result correct. So, here the tool wear is a problem and here it is a material removal is a problem correct. So, this way because anyhow you have to cut the aluminum, but you have to uh, finalize the process parameter in such a way that you are not end up with this you use some type of mist coolant and you add some type of projected with a high pressure uh, high pressure. So, that it will uh, uh, remove these things very easily right. So, here it is a tool wear now if you see this particular thing. So, this is the tool condition after 15 minutes of use and this is after 30 minutes and after 45 minutes. Now, if you see this is mostly the rotation is in this direction of cutting tool and then it is moving in this direction. So, now this is the up milling side and this is the down milling side. You can you can see that in earlier case also we have seen that the two chip formation uh, that means the burr formation on the down milling is high compared to the up milling. 
So, this is the condition after 15 minutes and after 30 minutes what is going to happen that your uh, cutting tool also getting worn and because of that you are end up with getting more and more uh, top burrs on the both the surface. Now, the size of this uh, burrs on the bottom uh, or the down milling is high and you have also getting burr in the up milling side. If you further increase that particular cutting tool for uh, uh, operation, then you can see that there is a large amount of uh, wear of the cutting tool and the size of the burrs are also very, very large in both the cases. So, now you can see that by tool wear you are getting worst and worst uh, condition of the workpiece material. So, now for getting a uh, surface finish is also important because here the surface if you see here if this location surface is very, very fine and now here you are getting some type of um, problems here. So, these are the uh, residual material which are staying and then you are getting marks also. So, these are the marks and when you are ending with this uh, wand tool further using this wand tool further then your roughness is also very, very high. Correct. So, you are getting both the things the higher the tool wear high surface roughness and the high bar formation. So, you have to um, estimate the tool wear that is very very important in this particular case because if you do not look into tool wear and you continue the machining your workpiece will not be acceptable at the end and sometimes what happened that here you can apply deburring operation very conveniently, but here deburring is also very very difficult because size of the bar is so high that you have to use some aggressive deburring operation and that aggressive deburring operation will actually create a problem at this finished surface also or the machine surface also. So, it is better to limit the use of the uh, cutting tool within a short period or you do some type of coating and use coolant so that you can increase this particular life to a certain further duration. So, what are the key aspect of the machining? The what we have learned that we have three different areas by which we can monitor or we can understand something versus the workpiece material and we have seen the grain size is important because smaller the grain size easy to remove material because the cutting tool will pass through the boundary of the grain. Hardness is playing important role because hardness you are getting a good surface, but your tool wear is very, very high. Homogeneity is important you will not get the fluctuation of the forces. If the presence of defects is very, very high material removal is easy, but what is going to happen that your workpiece will not be acceptable at the end. Impurities that is same material with a different size you will are getting different parts. Built up edge is also problem because if built up edge is there then your uh, tool will not penetrate much and it will create some type of stick slip type of phenomena. Elastic recovery is important because if it is a low then you will get a removal very, very easily. In terms of tooling size because these are the three things which are very, very important in our cases. What material we are using that is important that means, we have high speed steel, we have tungsten carbide, we have ceramic tools. So, those things are very, very important and we are very more concerned about the edge radius because sharper the edge radius we can easily remove the material and now we can give a small and small depth of cut depending on the sharpness of this part because we have to maintain that particular radius the HC should be higher than the RC. So, that is the uncut chip thickness or the depth of cut and this is the cutting edge radius. Correct. Grain size of that thing is important because we are using a very, very small tool. Correct. So, this is considered a very, very big tool we are using in a micro machining. So, it is considered as a 10 mm. Right. So, we are using a very, very uh, coarse grain of this uh, cutting tools tungsten carbide let us consider it did. So, now if you go from here to 100 micron then if you same thing what is going to happen that only 2 or 3 grains will come into this particular part. So, that means its strength is also very less. So, we have to use very, very fine grain uh, tungsten carbide particle in such a way that you will get a enough amount of particles to maintain that uh, stiffness for a longer time. Coating is important, batch consistency suppose that you are making 10 cutting tools, then all 10s are with the same quality or not because machining process itself is creating a problem at the later stage. 
then coming to the machine tool that you cannot get the micro machine component from all the machines. So, you expect some type of reasonable good specification from the cutting tool machine tool, so that it can uh, generate a micro machine. The spindle speed is important, you have to go with higher cutting speed, so that you have a reasonable amount of production rate. Run out is very, very problem because cutting a material with a very high run out of the spindle, you are end up with the uh, sudden failure of the cutting tool. Position accuracy that we have seen in the geometric accuracy or the geometric error in the x, y, z and other directions. Response time is important because when you give a command, how much time it requires to act on that command by the cutting tool. So, that is important, stiffness is important because it should uh, maintain its structure uh, in a firm way under the action of different type of cutting forces. Damping is important, higher damping will reduce the vibration to propagate into the different, different component. So, that is important. Thermal stability, these things we will discuss more detail in the uh, spindle part. So, thermal stability is very important because if you are getting a large variation in the temperature, all components have a different different coefficient of thermal expansion. So, material will expand in a different different direction with a different different magnitude and then your structure will be deformed completely. Error compensation is important because if your structure, we have seen in that video also that there is a error compensation with a 0.1 micron in a one machine tool company. That is that if you can come uh, uh, calculate the error compensation, then if you are going to target this particular thing, your tool is located here, then what is going to happen that once the temperature is different at different part, your machine sensor, temperature sensor will calculate those temperature differences and that temperature differences will be uh, transferred into the motion controller and motion control will again target this particular part to the actual location. So, at that time error compensation that is related to temperature compensation other than temperature compensation there are different sensors available which will do also the position compensation even if there is some type of deviation. So, our focus is on the workpiece material you cannot cut any material in the micro machining you cannot use any tool for the micro machining and you cannot use any machine tool also for micro machining. So, you have a specific uh, combination of all the three components then only machining at micro scale is possible. Right. So, what are the uh, summary of this difference is that workpiece principle is mostly same, material is removed, but there are differences are there one is the material is removed by the micro tools. So, you have to end up with or you have to fabricate this micro tool. So, that is also one of the process because when you are cutting at a micro school, you are using a micro cutting tool, but you have to also find some processes which are fabricating this micro tool. So, those processes are again the machining processes. So, again the requirement is very, very tight to these processes. So, that is the one thing feature size can be in the range of few micron to hundreds of micron. So, these things are different than the conventional machining and very, very important things are the specific cutting energy is very, very high because at small scale you are getting very less amount of defect, material strengthening is also very, very high, minimum on cut chip thickness, this you have to maintain otherwise you will not get a clear material removal, ploughing, rubbing those things are very, very frequent in the micro machining. Surface roughness you have to play very, uh, you have to pay more attention to this because surface finishing application is very difficult here you can apply a debring operation, but surface finishing operation is very difficult here because burr size is very, very large compared to the roughness component. If you are removing the burr, it is very easy because still it has a micron size or something, but when you are looking at the surface roughness, it is always a nanometer location, nanometer size. Microstructural effect is important because what is the microstructure of the component which you are uh, machining. So, it has different component, tool wear is very important. In micro machining, what is mostly happened? There is a tool breakage is more frequent. Breakage is more frequent than tool wear because even a slight amount of change in the force or different other force, other uh, parameter, your tool will suddenly break before it will reach to the wear. So, calculation is wear is not important. Calculation that how to avoid the breakage that is more important. If you can avoid the breaker, then you can do some measurement of wear, but if your tool is break, getting broken within a, uh, one minute, then there is no way of uh, paying more attention to the tool wear. Modeling is very, very difficult here because whatever theory we have learned in the 
merchant circle diagram force measurement those things are not directly applicable to this because you have to do lot of modification because these parameters are completely different sensing and monitoring methods are very very important here because these particular things because everywhere we know the forces are very very low right forces are low so this is very very big problem and sometimes you will not get any type of uh, voice out of that means there is no any type of noise or some uh, machine disturbance uh, things from that visual confirmation is difficult visual access difficult and other than that that you do not have less wall uh, space available because space also you do not have here because suppose you want to add some uh, microscope or the high speed camera or something how you can focus to that location that is also different because in macro scale you can easily get the uh, idea of the in, uh, focus on the, the chip and uh, that workpiece and tool interface but that interface access of that interface is very very difficult here so you you need very very high sensitive instrument that is load cell or the dynamometer or different type of eto, uh, acoustic emission sensors in such a way that it should it can able uh, it can measure the small amount of forces or any type of other vibration signal or any type of tool wear signal so those things should be there and size should be also very small because you have to accommodate all the sensors or monitoring devices in a small location so these are the different different problems or the different different uh, methodology by which you can Uh, successfully machine the micro components so what are the advantages of this particular thing that after comparing this micro machining and the macro machining we can find out that what are the ways so here what is the good thing that do not require expensive setups and relatively quick because we know the conventional machining so it is just a scale down of the conventional machining we know that how to do turning operation how to do milling operation same operation is here but we have to actually look into more detail so setups are not expensive relatively quick because we know all the basic or the kinematic structure of the machine tool which are very same no need for expensive mass and cost effective so this is related to actually the uh, lithographic processes lithography processor that is mems base that we have seen in the probably first class or the second class comparison between the uh, conventional this micro machining uh, mechanical micro machining and the mems based the processes so here you need a mask for uh, passing the light through it so that it will actually remove some of the portion of that uh, different different type of uh, Uh, surfaces then there is a etching of the surface and then you can get some type of features so those things are called the mems based surfaces then suitable for individual component rather than the base set because if you use this uh, mems based surface it is for mass production because in a single silicon wafer you can create hundred thousands or more than thousand uh, lakhs of components in a single uh, wafer but this is mostly used for the individual component rather than the base size and add more advantage you can actually create the real 3d free form surfaces in one setup and that is very very difficult or sometimes not possible by any other process let it be a uh, lithographic processes or any type of other advanced machining processes like electro discharge machining electrochemical machining or the laser based machining so the production of the micro injection mold for biomedical implant is or the devices you can actually create a 3d mold and then this injection molding or the some type of other casting micro castings are very very easy if you are getting a mold at the 3d uh, surfaces so that is the very very big advantage of this particular micro machining part and mostly you can do any type of machining of material because only thing that you have it a right tool for a right material metallic material composite polymer ceramic material anything can be machined by In this particular micro machining process because our if our tool is harder than the workpiece then there is no limit only we have to look into the tool wear of the part so that is the advantages limitations are also there because nothing is perfect size and accuracy constant by the tool geometry 
because what is the small feature you can create that depends on the tool geometry. If smaller the tool, smaller the features you can create, but the tool geometry is also important because we have to maintain the cutting edge radius smaller than the uncut chip thickness. So, that is the first thing we have to look into the detail of the cutting edge. Tool wear and breakage is very frequent in this case, breakage is frequent compared to tool wear. Issue with the surface quality finish and burst because if you are getting these particular things in the negative direction, then it is very difficult to remove those artifacts at the later stage. Material grains are also important here that is related to both the side that means not on to the workpiece side, but on the tool side also, but still less knowledge of appropriate machining conditions and values available for a different task. Because if you see our conventional machining, there are different design data books available, you keep the uh, select the workpiece and the tool material, then there are specific uh, speed feed and uh, desktop cut calculations available for optimum removal, but that is not available right now in the micro machine. So, mostly you have to do trial and error and you have to create your own database, so that later on that can be useful for others also. Now, this is also important how to handle this micro components. Once you machine all the components, everything is ready, now how to transfer that component from one location to another location, because size is very, very small and then it is creating a problem. So, handling, assembling and testing of the small micro machine components is very, very difficult. So, if you see this thing that once your machining is over, then you have to use some type of very, very uh, gentle uh, pluckers to move this component, but that also depends that what is the size of these things. Then there are some components available which are piezoelectrically uh, actuated that it will not create so much of force that it will actually damage the component or the uh, machine component to a large extent. Then there are some vacuum type of tweezer available that it is a vacuum type. So, you just touch the surface, it will pluck up this part completely and you do not require any type of forces. So, micro components can be fragile and difficult to swing handle. So, special instrumentation packagings are required. So, this is the some of the ways of handling these components. And in some cases, the micro components have handling features incorporated into the structure that may needed to be removed in the post processing. So, this is similar to the adding that additional material for the burr removal process. So, you add some extra material and that material will be helpful. Suppose, now see uh, when you are doing a casting or, or molding of a plastic, this particular thing, suppose you consider this particular gear. So, now this is the gear consider. Let me draw it further. something like this and hole is at the center. Now, when you are making that what you provide that you provide one extra feature here. Right? So, you create this features here, then you mold it, then what is happened? The molded component will be completely this part and then this contact zone is very, very small. So, you just uh, if you bend this part now, it will completely uh, come out of this part. So, these are the additional features you have to create just for handling of this part. Now, if you see this videos, let me show you this part. So, there are two different uh, ways. Now, if you see this is one of the vacuum holder. Right? And these are the different different uh, nozzles available if depending on the size. Now, if you see So, you can change this particular nozzle depending on the what is the size of the component you want to pick up. And then because of this air, then it will just suck and you press this button, it will uh, release this particular part. So, that is the advantage of using this part. This is about the small component, but if you have large component area, then you can also use a similar way, but now the area of this particular part is large. So, this is again the same vacuum type of things, but its area is large. So, this is the way you can actually uh, move this component and you can move to the different location. Advantage of here is also one of the things that you can actually change the uh, pressure of this particular part. So, how much pressure is required? So, this is the vacuum level, maximum, minimum is there. So, depending on the delicacy of this component, if it is very, very delicate, then what you can do? You can actually minimize the pressure, so that it will not damage the component here and this way you can move the component. So, these are vacuum based components.
and these vacuum based components are very very uh, handy in the fabrication of this particular part. So, this is all about the machining or comparison between the micro machining zone and the macro machining zone. We have seen about all the things on the uh, mechanics point of view, we have seen about the how to handle these components and we have also seen that how the errors and other things are generated. So, let me finish this lecture here and we will continue about the uh, component of the machine tools in the next class. Thank you very much.